Alrighty, we're getting started with this mini crate model. This is a weird Wendell. It's a weird guy, cool clothes, got that uh, lab look going. Let me see if I can get my light in a better spot for you. Um, so, already gotten going on him. Um, gonna start out, his uh, imagery had brown shoes, but he kind of had boots in that, so I figured we'd give him a nice cool wingtip um, shoe here. Uh, let's uh, take a look at how to do that. Just simple mixtures of black and white. You can see with the white, I have one, two, three base color and three highlights. So highlight, highlight, all the way to full white. And then with the black, base color, highlight, highlight, highlight. This area more for just really, really bright spots right in there. These other two colors, the first one kind of an overall uh, you want to keep your highlights pretty small when you're trying to uh, do something black, uh, especially when it's shiny. Uh, you want to keep away from turning it gray, uh, which we're bordering on that just a little bit, but we still got enough black area. Plus, picking up a lot of shine right now from just the light and the primer. The primer's a little bit glossy. Yeah, I just hit it a minute ago. Yeah. So I'm go in here. Let's get our base coat of gray on our wing tips and I might pause to do the base coat just to make sure I'm not hitting the grommets on his shoes. It's gonna be easier to highlight. But he just has these little kind of like shoe covers here. The other part of the uh, the leather shoe. And I want that nice black and white wing tip look. Alright, we got the highlight, or not the highlights, we got the ugh, the gray on there. Had a little bit of an overage on his foot, so that's where that shine is there. Um, but here, already have our step up mixed. It is a fairly light gray, 60 to 70% for our base, and then just one third step ups to white from there. Just a volumetric highlight keeping it relative to the surrounding objects and then always considering interest at the same time. Realism and interest interact in interesting ways. <laughs> you need to make sure that even with realism, this is a fantasy world and you still want things to look fun not super boring so stepping up with the next to last highlight here and then when we get to our white it's just an edge highlight on the front portion of the wing tip here I'm gonna hit that one just a little bit just a little bit holding our breath and we do edges cool and that's all we need for convincing on that with the black I'm gonna need to mix up a little bit more really really dark gray you can see there's not a huge amount of value shift you'll see it more on the model than you will on the palette because any amount of gray in there and you see I'm going more volumetric than highlight here we're gonna hit the laces his other laces are under his uh, pants which are gonna be pinstripe by the way fun with all these wrinkles in them mix in a little bit more gray this is a really really small highlight for this gray I'm gonna go up kind of the center line of the shoe here and then V it out a little bit so the highlight spreads as it, run up, as it runs up the shoe. And then like a ground plane reflection here. Right on the side. And same thing. Over here, kind of tracing the shape. Drop it down. Pull it up. So we're going around this whole 
front end. And then not forget the shoelace. For the grommets, they're so small. I'm just gonna do a bright highlight. You can see here. Got that the bright highlight in on the grommet just to make it look shiny. Like it's got a little bit of a Uh, gloss coat on it or it's made out of metal a black metal of sorts and just a little bit more white and then this is just a spot highlight so I won't even pull that all the way in I'm just putting that on the highest point and then just on the, on the tippy tappy of the shoe there I'll get the laces because these are a gloss waxed lace. Fancy, fancy shoe. Highlight in the center of the grommet there. And then grommets on our other side. The highlight area is kind of obscured. I'd like it to be kind of on the top and in between, but I'm going to pick a little point there just to show a tiny, tiny bit of shine on that grommet. Got a very dark blue gray coat for him. So we're gonna do the Exile Blue mixed with some black. That's the Pro Curl Black. I use the Pro Curl Black and the Chimera White. You can use any black or white you want really. Whatever you feel like works best for you. Um, so let's just get that base coat mixed up for his coat, a base coat coat. We're gonna make sure we can have a saturated dark blue gray here and just slather that on. I'm gonna go ahead and get this base coated and then we'll talk about how we're gonna highlight it. Alright, for the cloak, gone in and started, well, cloak coat, um, working in some of our highlights. Not going super high on the highlight, this is actually the top end value that you see here on the arm higher up on the model so the only other place we're seeing it really is like a little highlight here and then an edge highlight that comes up the side of the coat keeping it back down a little bit in value under here around behind the coat and then I have some preliminary first stage highlights which is just a like a quick build up into this value which is noticeable you see lines um, where they start to intersect and where they haven't been blended yet uh, what I'm doing for that is just kind of a little spit blend, which means I'll lay down where my highlight is, lick my brush, and then pull my brush into my highlight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work up this arm's highlights on camera for you so you can see where I'm going. The Chimera White is pretty strong, so I don't need a ton. You can see here it dramatically. Well, you can see a little bit. I can see it better. You'll see it better on the model. come in here and start blocking in where I want my highlights to be. You can see kind of that dramatic shift of the line. I want my highlights rolled kind of to this side of the model over coming from my light source. And layering in the in-betweens in because I want it to be a volumetric highlight and then for these uh, these little detail sections down in here I've just been highlighting the, the top kind of dragging it down the front side just a tad I'm gonna pull this over here I still want some volumetric highlight in our shadow this is probably not gonna go up very much I just want some difference between my, my light and shadow, kind of like I have that little mark here in the armpit. The base color, again, is a mix of our Exile Blue, heavier on the Exile Blue to get kind of that dark navy, and then just adding white into that to keep it desaturated as we move it up. So I want that desaturated navy coat look. looking over my arm section here where I want to pull my highlights down you can see the line starting to form 
in between. Pull it down here and see if I want to blend this. I'll do a brush lick, which isn't like a. It's just kind of a wipe the paint off on my tongue and then pull it up into my my highlight here just to blend it out between those two colors. I still have a, a blendy brush load, so I'm going in and readdressing some of those detail areas. And start to step it up a little bit. Add some white. And come in, sort of repeat the process, but go inside my previous layers, and if I need to blend, Got the whole spit blend ready, locked and loaded. There. I have to watch out. He's got a cuff. It's like a white t-shirt that's sticking out at the bottom. I don't want to paint over that. It's no like super big deal because we're layering right now anyway. I'm going to go back and address that. Right, that's the process. I'll step this up two more times just in here. A little bit smaller on my highlight because it's away from the light source and it's kind of tucked behind him so it'll just be this area gets the brightest highlights and then come back and show you and discuss what we did. Alright so finished up the coat here. This bright value matches these values here for the highlight areas as well as the edge highlight. Um, went back added a little bit of value shift in here in these highlights but mostly blended and again uh, spit blended with a little bit of feathering so when I say feathers you don't follow in this sort of brush stroke with the uh, with the pro progressives you go do, 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 little tiny agitations and feather them out and helps them blend a little bit went ahead base coated the pants and added preliminary highlight um, very neutral 50-50 gray value wise um, adding just a touch of white because these are very soft pants uh, for our highlight um, and then we're going to have our pinstripes that we're going to have to add uh, which are going to be light gray not white uh, almost too white value wise but this crease is going to be our big follow along so we're going to put a pinstripe right down the center of this crease and then do our spacing and have our little bumps and folds to follow along. Um, but here, if you can see just that little bit of value change, that's that value change that you're seeing in here, along with a little bit of natural lighting in there. Um, and again, the spit blend, feather, same thing that we did on the coat here. Uh, very thin with those highlights as well. Uh, I want the control of having the consistency of paint thin when I'm doing these. Uh, grays can be difficult to work with because their value is uh, when they're wet is a little bit higher than when they dry so they can look a little bit brighter before uh, they end up drying on the model. So always give them a chance to dry before you add those. Alright some tips on pulling these lines here over his uh, pants. These are difficult pinstripes trying to keep them even we're using a very light gray here these are our pants colors these are our pinstripe colors right next to it just to adjust back and forth we're going to pull one line here just to show you how I do it and keep your brush oriented toward the center of your body pull toward the handle along the line of the brush to line up where your line is going to be running with your brush pull it goes over the knee there it drops so I want to readjust kind of line up in a different way start again pull I'm going to reinforce that one just a little bit widen it same thing need to readjust because we're going over a hump a little bit sketchy kind of stipple it in there line I'm sorry you didn't see that last part so I'll pull another one right here I'm going to pull in two different directions. I'm going to go from here to here. And I'm going to flip them and do the other way. I'm trying to watch out for his coat. I get my spacing. Pull. 
I don't want to use a full body gray here. I want a little bit of moisture in there. And then my brush, it'll help the paint flow. Just cold. And you can go back with your darker color and trim these in a little bit if need be. I think I'm not going to readjust. I'm just going to come up here and attach. And just repeat as many times as it needs to wrap around the lake. Alright, after we get our pinstripes on, we're going to glaze in some shadows. So taking a little bit darker gray than our pants color, thinning it down a lot. The key to glazes is brush load. So if you have a nice big sopping pool of glaze, you touch your brush to it, pulls up all that glaze, you stick it to your model, you're going to end up with soppy pools on your model. So this, I would consider fairly heavy pigment for a glaze. You can see it kind of barely going on. You want to see your pinstripes through it. But at the same time, you want to add shadow to your pants and to start evening things out, make them look a little bit more natural. You see over here, I've already glazed this side. I haven't glazed over here yet, so it looks a little unnatural with the stripes. I go in, start dropping a few little glazed in shadows under these heavy folds. And already, they're starting to natural. It looks a little bit, needs a couple more layers. But starting to even them out. Need some shadow back here behind the leg so these stripes are going to get a little bit darker. Um, but again, already looking better. With the, the heavy folds in this guy, it kind of looks like pajama pants. We might go in and airbrush shadow in later. Alright, here we have the pants, more naturalized, got our shadows in there. Um, really important after doing those stripes, since they're one tone, to go back in and drop those shadows just so you have kind of the, the pattern coming in and out um, where it would with, uh, with light getting a little bit more obscured in areas where that one note's going to look fairly distracting uh, till that. Um, so base coat on the lapel here. Uh, this color which is a little bit more saturated blue, higher in value, and we're going to take it up a few steps. So adding white. And again, volumetric highlight. It is cloth. It's not shiny. So where the face is going to be a shadow over on this side. So highlight in the bottom of this lapel here, and then this is going to be pretty much all in bright light layer based painters like to just paint over their previous work over and over and over again because if you hate what you did before you just paint over it and if you're always painting over your stuff then eventually you're good at writing right I'm going to go and blend this out, hit this edge, hit this edge, uh, but same thing, I'm going to spit blend it and go in between these three value ranges, a little bit of feathering with the brush, um, same as the, the coat. Got a quick step here, just a very, very light gray used for our white shirt in here, right beside his necktie and then his shirt sticking out at the end of his sleeves highlighted with a pure white so just a quick light gray with a little white tick and then the shirt just left light gray no highlights needed down there in between the coat or the necktie cinnamon red base and then going to hit it with a kador red base just to punch up that saturation a little bit um you can already see it there it started pretty saturated against that blue um going in just trying to get that shape nice and even along inside this hard to get to area. Might have to stipple and push things around. Keep it from looking a little wonky. We'll see how this highlight goes. Get 
Okay, keeping it kind of the one side for our lighting scheme. Try to not go overboard with lighting scheme either because it's more about the model than the painter when it comes to these guys. Let's go ahead and get all our straps. We're going to base coat in Beastie Brown. We're also going to use this color for his vest as he is kind of matchy matchy with his leather and his bags and his vest and his straps and all those little brown things. So, bag here. And then his vest up in there. Fun to get to. And then even the belt right below the vest. So same color. I'll go ahead and get these base coats on. He's got a little garter belt there. You get that too. Alright, after you get your brown on there, you have beast of brown, it's time for some Gilliman flesh. We're gonna wash using our liner. You don't wanna use your nice brushes with your washes and your contrasts because they will get destroyed. So we're just using the Gilliman flesh to do, you know, topographical shadow to start our volumetrics. It's a pretty soft shadow. We're gonna go a little bit brighter with these guys. I just want that, um, little bit of diffused line between the objects that the contrast will give us just like a, a wash contrast just coats a little bit smoother so I'm gonna run everywhere there we go and you can see the difference between that color and the beastie brown keeps it rich um, easy to layer up a back with the beastie brown um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all these little areas so I've already gone back and painted a little bit just so you guys can see the difference and how subtle of a layer up you get with the Beastie Gilliman flesh and then back to Beastie Brown for a highlight. Really good combination to get highlights in subtly in layers without having to blend too much at all. And after we get these in we're going to add some khaki to brighten it up. We're going to add some khaki, adding that mix to our brown, not adding a white because we want to keep a saturation level of sorts. And I was thinking about doing texture on this bag, but I think as a man of science, probably doesn't get into too many scraps, and in a game sense, if he does, he's probably dead, I'm not sure. Hi. I've gone in and added a base coat of our mahogany brown to all the areas on the figure that we're going to paint gold. Um, so for our gold mixture, we have our mahogany brown from Reaper, our Japan uniform from Vallejo Model Color, and the Minoth white base highlight. This is about as high as we take up the gold. We might add a few touches of white on the goggles. Uh, some of the higher points up here just to draw a little more attention to them but the problem with adding white to your golds is you're going to desaturate that warmth and you want to keep that in there so let's go ahead and start layering up a highlight here on this cylindrical object so cylinders of course they'll they'll highlight just like this holder is see how the highlight kind of moves uh, comes down the center. We're gonna add that here just because this looks like you know, Probably the best photo angle with both of the characters looking in the camera So we'll put that highlight right facing toward the camera first few layers You don't have to worry about the shadows underneath these rivets And you can always go back and add them afterwards if you want to But I just mix progressive layers of this Japan uniform until we get to this solid color and then mix progressive uh, mixtures of those two as we go up. Yeah. 
and inside each previous layer. It's a little bit wonky because of the rivets. But not terrible. I usually like to feather along the lines, but I'm not going to be able to do that as much with this object's shape. Stay to the top side of the rivet more now. Kind of edge highlight these bottoms. Let's do this one top one so I don't bore you guys to death with uh, painting just the same thing at the bottom. We'll go up to the straight Japan uniform now. Getting more controlled, more narrow with this layer. And pull it around. Of course, we're going to go back and highlight all our individual rivets. And this is a small area to be painting. I hope it's showing up for you. It's mostly small, small areas of gold. So now we'll move to our Japan yellow and our Minoth white highlight. Getting into those point highlights. Here. Our edge highlight won't go all the way across. And our highlight's kind of right in the center of where this rivet is. Pulling an edge underneath here. Now we're starting to get a little bit of that metallic look. As soon as you start adding that, that ivory, you'll see the, the light start to reflect. Smaller edge, pull this highlight around here. Bottom edge, a little bit narrower. There, and then just a few dots of this Minoth white. Keeping that warmth in our gold. Just a tiny touch here at the top of that, uh, that ring, that band there. There you have it, non-metallic gold. We'll go back and finish all this and then move on. Ooh, lots of uh, gold non-metallic on this guy. <clears throat> Finished up on here. Cylindrical highlights here. We got same kind of cylindrical highlight. It's because in a curve, so accent the edge highlights a little bit. I'm gonna have these uh, intersection highlights here where it follows those uh, those crevices that that run along the model. Cylindrical, cylindrical, and then all the rivets, of course. You know, getting their little spot highlights because they're round. And they're gonna reflect everything. These uh, little sleeve. Uh, what are those called? Um, Skipping some eluding me at the moment <clears throat> but highlighted down and then making sure to get the little uh, cufflinks there we go uh, highlighted up uh, this patch going for a bit pretty shiny gold it's a little like kind of Illuminati symbol going on here a little eyeball in there uh, just a kind of relief of that and then everything with really the bolts on it and then the goggles for the the goblin and for Wendell here gremlin goblin um, we're going to do two different tones of non-metallic for the rest of the area and thinking about a magenta glow. So like a really, his, his goggles in the original work have kind of like a pink magenta to them. So I think it looked cool down here in the gun and charging up and the energy, you know, going through the hose maybe a little bit. Um, really cool, like right here, if we did it charging into the hose. Uh, <clears throat> let's do some skin tone. So I'm going to take some of this uh, light flesh. I already got mahogany on my palette for the gold. And this is just going to be kind of our base skin tone here. Just for him. The goblin gets his own. Gremlin goblin gets his own skin tone. Probably going for that really... Uh, 
Kind of pale, mad scientist dude. I don't know his backstory as, as much as I probably should. Right, not forgetting his hands and ears. Finish up this base coat and then we'll do. I've, I've done this before with the faces just because they're um, so tiny. But I'll paint a step and then kind of explain it each time. Alright, we've gotten our base coat and our first highlight. First highlight is just mixing more of the light flesh into our mahogany just to start developing contours of the face and have separation of the cheek and the upper lip in here. We haven't isolated the nostril, but we've begun to highlight it and leave a little bit of shadow where the nostril's deep. We got a little bit of shadow under this foot here. The neck tendon here and on the other side, as well as the throat highlighted in contours of the ear. So you got your sort of conch shape going on. A little bit of shadow left right here for the cheek. And then following the contours of the hands, the knuckles, uh, leaving, come on camera, leaving dark space in the uh, nail beds so that we can have a little bit of uh, definition around the fingernails when we paint those in. I'm going to step this up one more time. Of course, we're going to need to add a little bit of color to his face, probably get some yellow to warm him up. Uh, and then we might glaze in some, some shadows, uh, some more skin features, maybe a little bit of stubble. We'll see. All right, we've gone one more step up with the light flesh mixed into our mahogany. Again, just getting volumes uh, locked in for him, reinforcing these highlights, separating the nose, um, nostril from the bridge of the nose, uh, leaving his little, uh, I don't know what that indent above or above the lip, under the nose is, but highlighting each side of the lip, top of the lip, chin, uh, getting the bottom of the jaw here, giving him a little bit of a sunken cheek, and then reinforcing these highlights here on the ear, the neck, throat, uh, leaving this the bit of flesh back here that you can see alone for now, um, and then tips of the fingers, and then where the nail bed starts, top of this hand's a real bright highlight because it's forward facing in the light. Getting pretty pale. I'm going to add some yellow to him now, uh, or to the skin tone. I just need a little touch of it. I'm going to do this uh, N&M gold here for a highlight. Warm up the highlights, put some life back in the skin right now because he's pretty pale. So I'm going to add that into our skin tone here. Grab this little dirty light skin tone. See how much brighter that feels just with that warmth in there. I don't need to dumb it down a little bit. I'm going to keep this brightness over here for highlights, but that yellow adds that fleshiness back in. And come in and just do the bridge of the nose as a test for our tone. I like that, add some brightness, add some life back. So I'm going to go in and reinforce highlights. All right, we've added our yellow based highlight to the skin, naturalized him up a little bit. Uh, now we're going to look at the shadows. He's uh, too porcelain at the moment. So I'm going to take some of this brown, where to put it, sand brown. Sand brown, a little bit of blue to knock out the red a little bit. Um, and when I say a little bit, it's a tiny bit. Because the blues are pretty strong. See how strong that is on the palette? You can see it right there in the corner. Let me see the difference between the colors here. This is just going to take those reds, those porcelain colors, bleed them down a little bit. So we're going to glaze this on. So we get real thin. Glazes help our control. Glazes are uh, the the thing that we can use to experiment a little bit. Um, and, you know, with every model, I like to do just a little bit different, you know, because I want to I want to play with stuff. I want to play with color. I want to have a little bit of fun. Uh, so I got glaze on the brush here. And we're just gonna come over into the shadow, and I can already see that I like what's this doing. 
you can see a very, very, very small shift in color. I also want to glaze over this shadow some because it's a really, really hard line on the mouth, but this was just a designator of where that feature of the body was, of the face. That blue is already adding a little bit of purple to our shadow instead of that porcelain pink. And when you load your brush with a glaze, so I got a really, really watery glaze over here, take it off. Take it off the brush just like you would a dry brush. That way it doesn't go and then just clog up all the crevices like a wash. Because you don't want to apply a glaze like a wash. You don't want it to pool. Because then it's a wash, it's not a glaze. Hit the ear here. Add back another another layer on the jaw. You see how that, that face kind of went from porcelain to peachy. Hit that shadow again. And I'm going to play with that for a little bit. Get things evened out and then we'll do some final highlights. Alright, finished up on skin tone. Um, just a few little light things that I did. Um, here in my mixture you can see this bright here is just the fingernails. I stepped up our blue glaze mixture and did some final highlights. Uh, that's on the nose here. Tip, just a tiny, tiny dot on the nostril, lip, and then bottom of the chin and bottom lip. Well, top of the chin that's under there. But he's got some nice uh, facial features. Um, glazed in these shadows a little bit just to soften them up so he didn't have his heart of a lip line there. The stronger you make the lines on somebody's face, the, the older, the more like sunken, sallow they can look. Um, so here's the fingernail color. You can see it's just a little bit brighter in value than the rest of uh, those areas and then, uh, or the areas around it. And then uh, nail bed highlights, knuckle highlights, uh, forehead, leaving it not like you know, leaving it dark, it's not super bright, the hair is going to be shadowing a lot of it. Uh, and then taking just a little bit of a red glaze, so this is how thin my paint was for the red. Doing a little bit on the cheeks here, uh, a little bit on the bottom lip, just to designate it. Usually on male figures, you just hit the bottom lip, don't worry about the top lip. You can do it on females too, uh, depending on how big the lip space is. Um, with these privateer models, you know, it's like... It's, <laughs> you know, the upper torso is the size of a fingernail. So he's a little bit larger scale than, than normal. He's, I guess he's like more 32 for the Riot Quest. But, <clears throat> you know, bigger helps get things like those lines in. Uh, next, we're going to go in. We're going to get his hair done. Kind of hitting the isolated objects before we do the uh, workhorse objects like the, the non-metallic. And then uh, we'll do the non-metallic first and then we'll look at uh, painting up this, this gremlin guy here. And for the hair, I'm going to use a mixture of uh, coal black and the Beastie Brown. I want to take that brown down. I like the Beastie Brown, but it's a little too high in value. So pick a good spot on the palette you guys can see. And knock this down. It's going to desaturate it some, but this will be a good shadow tone for our hair. Yeah, I've been using this palette a lot, so I got... I've been using it a lot, but not... It's been open a lot, so there's things getting stuck on it. Hairs and dust and whatever. Alright, so that's going to be our base hair color, and it'll work up from there. Alright, we got our base coat for the hair in. So now we're going to take a little bit of the Beastie Brown, mix it into that base layer, and start our highlights. Uh, cool thing about this model is it's got a lot of texture in the hair, so... You don't have to make your own. It has kind of that anime triangle volumes going on. So you go in and highlight the, the tops of those. You're not too worried about individual strands yet. But don't cover everything up and don't knock out your shadow going to start. Um, just volumetric highlight for now. Meaning we're going to focus more on the front. Fewer highlights on the back. Uh, and then we're going to start looking at kind of our banding where our highlight would be for uh, reflection because hair is naturally shiny. 
All right, we've got our highlights laid in, getting a little bit more boy band with it. Uh, we're going to go straight to our Beastie Brown now. No more mixes. Well, there's going to be mixes, but... So again, starting to change from volumetric to texture and highlight. So more of a reflective highlight. Which his hair's going in so many different directions that reflections could re realistically be anywhere, depending on his environment. I'm going to start to add just a little bit more color here, and then these will be the guidelines for our, our H highlights. For our shines. So, you can start seeing it's worked in there as comparison to the other side. It's a little more colorful. Values up just a tad. Alright, now that we got those in there, time to build up those spot highlights they're going to do little highlights in a band around the hair so kind of developing that that light reflection that's going to be there um, and real real just some of these curves up in here real minor highlights just to show that it's shiny as well because it's coming in from a different direction. We don't want to shift them blonde. We want them to have brown hair. So I added some of the yellow that we were using in that skin tone, the non-metallic uh, highlight from Reaper. This one. <clears throat> and mixed it with my brown. It brought the value up a good bit because it's shiny. It's okay we see those layer, uh, layer marks a little bit. Uh, because the highlights would appear that way naturally. All right, we got our highlights in for the hair. And you can see anywhere that there's kind of a tuft that curls around like that and it's sticking out at different angles that we're just kind of hitting that apex of the, the tuft just to show that that area, that high point or zenith of that shape is reflecting light from it. And realistically, it could be anywhere along that line. Um, but, you know, it's so small um, that I didn't want to get it too cluttered with highlights so just going with the midpoints of those uh, those shapes uh, we're going to take our ivory here so ivory next to this color here next in that's our that's our point point highlight i got to go real small with these that's going to be right in here tiny tiny dot for that just to show Show that shine, and that's only on this Corona. That Michael Bay lens flare, there. So I might move that down. I don't know if I like that it's going in there. So I might have to adjust it just a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna I'm gonna move that down on each side because right now it looks a little bit awkward at that brightness all right hair is drying i glazed down all of the hair with the um, beastie brown um, so i got a watery side of that and just sort of uh, knocked the highlights back a bit that way i could change the shape of the highlight he still got like a little bit leading in this angle looks really good though to me with his hair coming forward, so I'm gonna leave it alone. It gets kind of poofy back in the back, but I don't know if that's because the gremlin's leg is like under the hair, so it's pushing it up and forward. Um, I don't know. And then I hit it with a, uh, a sepia, and I touched some spots in, in here to add a little bit more striation in the hair with the yellow and beastie mix, and knocked out all of the uh, the men off highlight. I think I went up a little bit too high in that sense for for what we're doing and for the hairstyle. Um, keeping it more in that brown with like a touch of blonde highlight in it. Um, now 
we're gonna move on we're gonna do like a few of the straps and uh, this little patch ring here uh, so we're gonna do a textured um, a lot of texture in gray so I get a kind of a mid to dark tone gray here and I'm gonna go around this patch and just little, little tiny dots make it look like it's sewn on there and then we're gonna highlight those up so stepping up that gray for our next layer we've got our sort of stippled pattern around the patch and a little bit gonna go around hold my breath and highlight those just again to make it look like it's been embroidered on there all right for our backpack straps we're gonna do kind of a strap nylon so we're gonna add some texture to it keep it in a grayscale um, we got a little bit up here that you can see but just adding those uh, little striations there in black and white we're gonna start with a mid-tone gray here somebody left the door open it's chirping and it comes through we can go ahead and hit an edge highlight and you can do volumetric highlighting with this as well. So I'll just go ahead and get this in here. And then I'm going to pull lines perpendicular to the shape here. Just to start adding that texture. Mm -hmm. And then we step it up. A little bit more white into our gray. Come back. We can start layering these up. And then flip it over, connect it from the other side. Hopefully that was in focus while I was painting on it. And then you can take, connect this edge highlight. A little bit down in here because the edge highlights are going to get brighter as we get to where our highlight is on our volume. So we we'll keep connecting those. And then we'll go back and we'll glaze in some black. We're not going to step this up two more times to a pretty um, bright gray. Uh, this is going to be dots on the edge. But let me step it up a couple times off camera, and then uh, I'll show you finishing it up. All right, now that we're at this point, we're going to take a really, really bright gray, not quite white, and then dots. Just to show that texture, I'm going to do a little bit here. If I can get my brush in there and get the light in there. That's a little bit awkward working at that angle. Got it in there. Okay. And then we'll take some black, make it glazy. And then we can even up our shadows here. bit of a thicker line right at the bottom here I think the dots got into my cloak a little bit there we go 
And you can continue to glaze to add those shadows. Just remember, unload that brush. But that'll create your differences in the pattern without having to do so many different layers of your gray. All right, now we're gonna go in and start marking out where we want our lighter non-metallic metal to be. So we're gonna mix up our base color. It's gonna consist of black, some of our Vallejo turquoise, light turquoise, you can see that. More black. The Pro Acryl black gets it, it gets weaker on wet palettes. Maybe I like didn't shake mine up good enough. But <clears throat> I ended up like getting a lot more pigment out of it. It seems like it it hydrates quickly. There we go. There we want kind of a blue gray to start from. We're gonna lighten this up so our white's gonna desaturate it. Over here, grab some of that. There we go. It's about what we're looking for. Oh, kind of a, a light blue gray. I'm going to pick out some objects. I know I want this plate back here to be brighter. And we'll have the blue versus sort of the pink on the uh, goblin gremlin. Do things like the fans. I don't want the fans to be brighter. Let's go in here. Just get it in there. We can repaint the stuff around it black later. I don't want the ribbing on the gun to be that color too. So we're just going to go through, make some choices. Make it look cool. We got those two different tones of metal to get in here. Basically, like a steel and then like a gun metal or black metal. All right, we got all our uh, base colors in for our lighter, non-metallic. Uh, the bag it has its little uh, strap connections. We're going to do that in that color. Plus a little strap across his chest there. All these little uh, vents, power conductors, nodes, whatever they are, they're going to have it. I'm um, also thinking about doing that. There's a magenta glow that he has in there. Uh, if we're going to do that glow in there, I wanted this to be uh, more pronounced. So we're going to do the brighter metal there. Here, this coupling... Um, of course, the front of the gun, these little knobs. These little knobs you might do is uh, like color buttons. Um, he's got some little levers here, which he's like pushing on with his foot. Kind of cute. Let's get that one there. Um, I think that's it for all the little doodads that we got. So to bring this up, we're going to take more of our white. Here is the base color over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white here. And let's go through the steps of highlighting up just on the front of this cylinder shape. So we've already got our gold in there, so that shows us where our highlight is. Or I am showing myself where the highlight is. Does that make sense? I'm coming up all the way down, mimicking. I'm not worried about the vents quite yet, so if I get anything in there, whatever. That was me going... Pfft didn't come out, it's just dead. In there. Make sure we get it in that spot too. So I'd mimic that same highlight back here. But for the sake of time, add a little more white. One more step. Gotta go pick up the kiddo here in 15 minutes. I gotta get some stuff in the car, so. I'm gonna finish up all these non metallics tomorrow. 
and then continue the video from there. I got kind of a round lip here, so I'm avoiding that. Because it will be a different reflection, or at least lie in a different plane. Starting to edge highlight a little bit, so I'm pulling lines in that crevice here. Just need to do the same thing up here. I fat brushed it. So that's why I keep these colors on my palette, so I go back and go, go away. I didn't need you. All right, and we need some yellow. So I got some of that yellow from our skin tone. That was today. Just gonna rehydrate it over here. Get it on the tip of my brush. Go here. And take some of this base color here. Get it in there. You'll notice it gets a little green. Add a whole lot of white. Because we want to bring the value up from what we have sitting in this section. But we want that yellow in there. So that ends up being our next highlight. And you notice I'm not using this brush stroke. I'm kind of feathering it as best I can while demonstrating. Reinforce those lines that we painted just a second ago leading out. And see that, that yellow has already got that shift in. Bing! It's reflective now. Right? Because that yellow is picking up on sunlight. up that edge highlights on. Make sure that we got a nice solid highlight. Since we're working wet. All right. Get some more of this fresh white. Step it up twice. Because we're going to go all the way to white with this metal. It's bright. And then you can get some of these edges. If you want. Then our brightest highlight, just pure white here. It'll pull that warmth down, so be sparing with this. It's getting it right next to that gold. Pull it over here. Down this edge a little bit. I'm gonna like squat and bend my knees, make sure that I'm in there. All right, now I really like that, especially with the coat. That blue is uh, looking like it's reflecting in there. Getting those nice zings. And that'll bring a lot up value-wise in these areas. And those little points of light, just like the gold did. The gold's really singing, and I want that metal to sing as well. All right, we got all of the lighter non-metallics locked in. So I'll just turn it around so you guys can see what I got. Uh, highlighting toward the bottom of these uh, little gills. Um, looks like I need a touch up right there. I'm gonna do a little bit of a line. Sometimes you hit things you don't mean to. And just knock that out so it's trimmed in there real good. You got his uh, little part of this power pack, these vents, a little shield that's up top. Um, all a lot of cylindrical highlights for these parts. Um, flats in here and toward the tip of the gun. Uh, little brackets and things, still cylinders. He's got his little. Uh, clip here for his pouch. Um, 
trying to think what else we got. Uh, spherical highlights for the little knobs on each side. They're the little goblin gremlin guys resting his foot. Um, and I think that is about it. I went ahead and painted the little um, connector in between his goggles. It's the same recipe as this stuff. Kind of has that almost gold feel, but it's not not quite not as much red in it. I'm um, gonna look at this corrugated pipe here. We're just gonna go for a kind of a gray muted pipe look. Kind of like that irrigation stuff. Not going shiny on it. So I'll highlight it up a few layers, starting with a, a base kind of dark gray. My black's getting really thin, so I might need to add some more of my Vallejo black in there. All my other paints are drying out, but that black just wants to be soupy. Thicken that up. So I'll take this up to about a medium gray, and that's about it. This pipe doesn't really need to be a uh, an eye catcher, really. Then we'll see what we can do as far as uh, detailing. I haven't got word back yet on whether or not the magenta is a go. Really want to do some uh, magenta OSL coming out, peeking out from all these little energy spots. We'll see. Sometimes it's based on the character, and I might just not know the right thing to do for said character. We're just attacking these pipes from two angles, pulling to the apex of where I want my highlight to be, so my brush stroke comes toward, and I flip it towards that center again. You're already seeing a little bit of highlight building up there, and we'll step it up. A little bit more, and just getting smaller each time with the highlight. Basic volumetric. Flipping, same thing. Squaring them in there. It's pretty, it's, the object's a little bit wider than my brush. That's why you see me go like, you know, one, two, three, try to get that coverage in there. That's all we'll do for that pipe. Um, looking at these cords. I'm gonna go with sort of a green gray, uh, really, really muted green gray. So I have a dark green that I pulled out right here, the extra dark green, pretty saturated green. They're gonna desaturate a little bit with the with the black. I mean, it's not like a fully saturated green as you can see, but fairly saturated to begin with. And you can see that green sort of influence on our gray there. I'm going to base coat all those hose objects with that. Just to play into the colors that already exist in the model. And then we'll look at highlighting after I get all these parts base coated. Once, once we get those parts space coated, um, I'm going to take some khaki to bring it up instead of the white. I'm going to shift it a little bit in a natural tone. I was kind of torn whether or not to go like natural with this or brighter, uh, kind of non-metallic. 
Um, so we'll look at this section of uh, hosing here. You can see I've done this, this connection, there's one back in here, and then this one that leads all the way to the gun. So we're going to keep it natural. We'll step it up a few times. We're not going to go all the way to this khaki. But you can see my progression here. It's like it's keeping it in that sort of brown, green, gray range. But not going nuts on these parts. There's plenty of other parts that we already went nuts on or still have to go nuts on. But that's about as high up as we're going to take that. You can kind of see the difference with the, the light and the shine there. Um, we're going to do that to, to all the hoses. Keep that kind of natural dark look. All right, got all those highlights in on the hoses for a nice muted cabling. Cabling is not interesting usually in life. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to do our black metals. Uh, so starting with a mixture of black and mahogany, it's this base color here, um, about an even mix, and then adding white, yellow, yellow, white, white. Um, so this is the, the yellow over here. And we're using the yellow for value in these two steps here. So I will demonstrate. I have a nice little round object here that we need to get highlighted up. So you can see that reddish brown, muted reddish brown. I think people's natural tendencies to make things different colors is correct. You know, and see somebody, they get a model, and it's got five wires on it, and there's a red, a yellow, a blue, a green wire on the model. They're using the fully saturated versions of those colors, which isn't correct. But if you take a color that is complementary, mute it down a little bit, take the, the starkness out of it, it's going to play a lot nicer with everything else around it. So you got to think about intensity when you're painting as well. So you have fully saturated colors. Those should be like your main scheme. The thing that's going to be the color. You know, the, even this blue cloak that he has on is very desaturated. It's not like a super RGB blue. Something that's been pulled down so that it plays nicely with other colors. You know, blue and red. We have a little bit of red in the space metal, so these colors are going to play well together. And we have kind of a cylindrical highlight. Keeping like non-metallics in mind when doing these highlights and bringing it to yellow. Yellow is going to complement our green, red is going to complement our green, but it's going to do so real minutely. It's not going to go crazy. And look like a Christmas tree. So our instincts are right. Just gotta just gotta learn how to apply them. And that's what we're doing for that metal. We're not bringing it all the way up to white. You see here I got one that's I've, I've brought up a little bit. Um, I think we're we're about here so we're like 80% white. All right, we're going to start on the gremlin skin. It is a gremlin, because I had to look up references. Um, royal purple, warlord purple, and German yellow. So we're going for like a desaturated uh, kind of pink. Um, so we're going to go a little more saturated in the shadows. Just my camera. Uh, so our base color mixture of this royal purple, warlord purple. Getting nice and pink here. And then mix some of our yellow in. Purple is a much stronger pigment. So I need to add some more of this Warlord to get some more red tone in it. Yeah, there we go. So again, you see how the yellow is desaturating the, the purple and the magenta here? Kind of like um, 
the Vallejo Game Color uh, Alien or Game Air because the Alien Purple is a lot more desaturated. And we're just going to get a base coat on. Probably need about two coats. You can still see a little bit of black showing through. That yellow, of course, is going to affect the coverage. The magenta as well, the Warlord Purple, isn't like a traditionally good coating color. But the Royal Purple is. So it's boosting the coverage of our figure here. It just means that the blends are going to be a little bit easier going up because colors that don't coat blend well your base color in we're gonna go in and start tracing the musculature and I want you guys to highlight up to the next muscle group and leave a little bit of a dark line right underneath it so all these little bulbous shapes you're gonna take you're gonna leave a, that dark shadow in the center and we're kind of tracing over right so this, you got the little divot where the spine is. We're going to leave a little divot where the spine is here. Redo. And then we're going to take and we're going to highlight everything up here. But don't worry about the little warts. We'll uh, knock those out in a little bit. <clears throat> All right, we got any sort of defining shape like right there on the ear. And the earlobe, and then we'll leave a line right there, and then highlight the rest of it. All right. Now this is um, a mixture into our base of more magenta and more yellow. Um, no white yet. These mixtures have white in it, and then we're we're glazing. So this little foot here, we finished up um, just to test out the uh, the color palette is uh, is in there, and then we glaze with a really really bright uh, pink once we're done uh, but we're shifting shifting everything pinker because these guys are pretty light colored pink so I'm taking these muscle groups and before I start the next part I'll uh, I'll show you what it what he looks like alright last shadow tone before we get to uh, the mid tones we're gonna take some of this um, light flesh here and we're mixing it into our previous layer. I'm going to show you what I did with the, the last layer. You can see just little, little bitty lines where the musculature and shapes are broken out in the guy. Get that light up there so you can see better. Um, some areas, you know, it's, uh, light will travel across, so you don't need to leave shadows uh, in. Some of those spots. It looks like there's a spot I missed on his arm, so I need to go back and paint that. Um, but same thing, leaving just a tiny bit of the previous color coming in. Kind of filling in and leaving a little bit of sh shadow tone. And then we're going to glaze and adjust tones after that all right adding our next color step up uh, a little more yellow and magenta added into the mixture with the light flesh bringing it up so get a little orangey uh, more orangey than we were um, but again you can see the flesh is starting to build up I added a few little dots in the back there for a spine Let's see if he He's kind of a buff little dude, really cut, so, you know, it's probably dehydrated a little bit. But this is kind of true mid-tone for these guys. Um, we're still a little graphic with our, our highlighting scheme, and I'm kind of taking it slow, building up the, the color, so you can see the the difference in color there on top of the ear but, but everything kind of laid out kind of block wise with him um, each individual shape and again kind of just more accounting for shadow than light at the moment 
All right, we've gone up one more step on him, continually just adding this pale flesh, or light flesh, into our mixture of our yellow and our uh, warlord. Um, so we get pretty, pretty bright with that. So same process over and over again. Just testing out some glazes on the back. Uh, didn't like this one, kind of a mahogany. Um, so going to a Reichland flesh shade. Um, so I'm going to touch that up on the back. Um, so here goes it. Kind of naturalizes a little bit. Add some of those orange tones into the purple. Um, and going fairly light with it. I don't want it pooling really at all. I'm just taking that color down. So now we're getting really fleshy with it. Um, taking those purples and sort of blending them up a little bit and then blending the highlights down which we'll need to go back and add um, again once this is dry and then we're going to have um, just some light flesh highlights down on the belly because the bellies are generally uh, lighter than the rest of the body. All right, settling here on the goblin's skin tone. We're base coating the warts or the little pimples, boils, whatever they are, in a mixture of black and Prussian blue, just to desaturate a little bit, and then we're going to bring that color up with white to highlight it. Um, so taking a little bit of this white, if it's still active. And just kind of a grayed out blue. Volumetric highlights for these little little warts. If I could paint on screen, that would be amazing. I'll probably take this up one more step. Went ahead and kept a little bit of that red in the back. I think it's uh, interesting. So if, uh, if you like that look or the darker kind of reddish shadow on the back, then um, that is just mahogany and um, the Warlord Purple mixed down to a super, super thin glaze. So this is here on the palette, and then this is here, the mixture, the watery mixture that... Uh, that I pulled the glaze from, um, and then just went and re-highlighted with this band of colors here, which is the uh, Warlord yellow, a lot of yellow from here, which is the N&M uh, highlight, and the light flesh. So a lot of colors going on for this guy's uh, skin tone, but I think he turned out to be a cool, cool little dude. All right, final highlights on the little boils there, and now we're going to paint teeth and nails. It's time for Manny Petty and the dentist. And we're doing a base coat of Beastie Brown and black mixed together for that. So Beastie Brown from Game Color and black from Model Color, because it doesn't matter where the black comes from, and then khaki to bring it up, and then white to do... Uh, final mixes, but this is my mixture here for my base coat. So fairly dark um, Want some shadows and kind of knocking out that final bit of purple on there All right now we're going to be adding khaki to our base mixture here And bringing it up So the teeth pretty small you're not going to need to blend those too much um, toes a little bit more prominent I mean they're still really small but just bringing those little toozles up all right we got toenails done went up two more steps so a little bit more khaki then add some white to that khaki mix um, did little dots on the top of the toes there for some some brightness and then teeth got pretty much just this color and this color we we went and based with the the dark skipped that one and did these two if you're comfortable just if it, it's too small of an area just do the brightest one for the teeth um, they're not like super bright teeth he doesn't brush very often um, I don't know maybe this guy brushes for him 
Um, maybe Weird Wendell's the gremlin, and this is just his mount. Who knows? Um, all right, we need to move on to the pinks, which I believe are the last step we have here. Um, so goggles are going to be pink. We're going to have some energy flowing around. Um, let me get that set up. All right, with the glasses, his nice pink glasses here, we are taking a base coat of mint and working it down to Prussian. So we're going to do a 50-50 of this after straight uh, mint and then the Prussian blue straight for our shadow. Um, so you can see the uh, progression there in this lens. This lens just has the base coat of mint so I can illustrate for you. Alright, so I move my palette up a bit so you can see. We got here our mixture. It's the mint, the 50-50, and then the Prussian. Um, and what I'm doing is just creating little circles in the lenses. So there's one. There's another. And then the dark. So this will give me a gradient behind the uh, the cuttlefish color. Pink dragon. Dragon. Um, and then I'm just going to slather that pink dragon all in these goggles. This is a glazing paint. So you can see coverage is light it is supposed to be this is not for coating this is for glazing in colors so I want it pretty heavy and then I can go in and sort of manipulate it move it around a little bit and I like the the way that you know it's getting around the rim of the glass we're gonna mix this with some white to punch it and to do some highlighting. That white, of course, is gonna increase the, the coverage, the viscosity of it. Just to go back over where I'm seeing some of the highlight poking through on these lenses, but I still think that's, that's pretty cool. All right, <clears throat> so taking a little bit of white in our fluorescent color here, mixing it up, a little highlight at the bottom of each one of these, and then a dot of white. All right, it's already blended from our, our mint layer. We got that nice solid around the uh, uh, edge of the glass. And now we're starting to drop into all these little areas here. And we went ahead and painted the buttons with a mint uh, base coat. All right, pinks are in. Um, again, that's cuttlefish. Cuttlefish works really good for this process because of its uh, nature to, to glaze. It'll just drop into areas and you don't, you, don't have to worry about getting overage anywhere. You just wipe it away. It just wipes right off. Um, we got all these little cool pinks. Uh, pulled it toward the, the center here. That way it looks like a little bit brighter where our highlights are. And then all these little fans on the back of the gun. Little buttons here. Got the same sort of highlight as the goggles. Uh, so our guys are ready to rock. Got that fan back there. Fans on the uh, ends there where he's sticking his thumb in. I guess he's immune to... What, I mean, that would hurt if that thing kicked on. Um, but, uh, base time, mix of English uniform and our Beastie Brown uh, for our base. And we're going to hit that with a wash. The Agrax Earthshade once it is dry because we don't want it to mix on the... Where is it? Hold on. All right, once your earth shade is dry, I went ahead and did a little bit of an airbrush of the uh, Lamia Medium over it because uh, the, the newer washes are drying a little bit glossy. So I wanted to map that out some. Um, so this is just the, the earth shade over that. We're gonna take some khaki. We're gonna dry brush. Gonna do some sound effects. Big nerd. Say big nerd or geek. Trying not to get his shiny shoes not shiny. Deer tay. Do a little bit around the back. 
I'm gonna get a smaller dry brush real quick. So these are the dry brushes from Knights at the Game Table. They sent them to me. They were nice enough to send me some things to try out. I know these are an earlier model of their brushes. I think they've improved them even more. If one can do such a thing. But it helps you get down in there close to those areas. Get some dry brushing. Alright, I'm gonna get the big dry brush back out. I'm gonna hit some of this light yellow here and just mix it without rinsing out my brush. Just to bring this up a little bit. A little brighter in the front here. The warmth adds brightness. There we go. Uh, next is flock. Alright, we got our tufts here. I'm going to take this green one and we're going to trim it down. We're going to trim the verge because we need short grass. Alright, once you have your bush trimmed and thoroughly glued down, you're going to take some of the sepia. Always paint your flock. Paint your flock. It's a part of the model. It has texture. You can add stuff to it. It's not just one and done. Add some shadows. So shadows here at the base. You paint your flock on display models. If you're doing a gaming figure, who cares? Judges are just going to look at it and be like, I don't know how to paint either. Well, it's got some flock on it. Done. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> also adding some khaki to the top. Here, gonna add a little bit of yellow too, just to do some. Brighten it up. See, it adds, it adds a little bit. I like it. And if I'm judging your model, I'm gonna be like, well, this person didn't paint their flock. They would have won, but I mean, that's competition. I paint your flock. Um, now we're just going to add the black ring to the base now. I got Vallejo black, and then we'll. I don't think we'll do a varnish since I already hit it with the um, the medium. If you don't have a a varnish, the uh, the Lamia medium works pretty well for a protective coat. If you would like, this is also a, a display figure, a studio figure, so it's not like it's going to get played with. It's just going to travel. And, handle. Why risk getting things foggy or shiny on accident because sometimes the varnishes go shiny. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit my cash app, buy me a car, I don't know. One of those things. Some of those things are free. <laughs> If you're a good enough negotiator, cars are free, I bet. But please feel free to ask questions. Always happy to answer questions. And I hope you learned something. I'm learning the entire process of painting a black ring around the model right now. Do, th do this to your models, guys. Like, I see a lot of models that just have this ring, kind of. It's like, you can see the dry brush mark. Like, you can see this stuff sticking over it. Come on. It cleans it up. It makes it look nice. You can paint it a color. You can paint that bright green like GW used to do for their old models. But, hope you enjoyed it. Learned a lot. Happy painting.